Shalom Israel, Shalom, Shalom, Brother Nakwam, watch me for Israel coming back at you with these precepts. And another cold cut, giving of course our honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashima Mashiach Wamalak Yahweshai, double honors to the elect elders of the house of David, that's been in this truth for decades and decades, patiently waiting for the second coming of Hamashiach Yahweshai. A hearty Shalom to you mighty men that go out there and labor and do the work of the Most High, presenting your body as a living sacrifice. And enduring all things for the elect's sake, pushing this truth and magnifying the ministry. Shalom, shalom to all of the men that may not be out there as of yet on the highways and byways, but they're working on it. They're getting built up in the spirit, they're praying, they're fasting, they're studying, they're being diligent and abounding in the work of the Lord. Shalom to the aquath out there, holding it down in the households, reverencing the husbands, being submissive and moving in the spirit of our righteous foremothers. And as you're looking on your screen, the top cut is cold cut. It's more signs of the times, right? With the increased tension out there in the state of Israel, I did an IG live on that um, last night, right? So if you check that out, we went into the signs of the end of the world. We went into current events, the upcoming blood moon, May 26, which is a major prophecy showing you that judgment and bloodshed is only going to increase on the earth. You understand? We went into what's happening between Hamas and the state of Israel. Right between uh, over 400 or so rockets, these numbers fluctuate every day. Sometimes it's 70, sometimes it's 90, sometimes it's 400. So we went into those rockets. We showed you video clips. We showed you about the gas shortage, economic collapse signs. And now this is another major sign of the times. Looking at that on your screen, and I might play a little bit of this video. It says the Messiah, right? The Messiah. Uh, now this is from three weeks ago, right? This is very recent news. Me, so everything's lining up perfectly. And that's why it's important to watch. We watch for war. We watch for geopolitics. But we also have to stay on top of um, current events and international news. Right? It's just the Messiah. Meet the man. Meet the Australian man who says he's Jesus and his followers. That is from 7 News Spotlight YouTube channel. You can check it out. Now, what they're telling you or what this man is about to tell you is he believes that he is Jesus. Now I'm thinking of a thousand precepts right now and I want to destroy that man in the land of the living. But hey, I'm going to play this clip and we're going to show you what the, the mentality of the so-called white man. How he, how he has been robbed of, of knowledge from even his own people. Right? Now I, I'm led to believe that this man he really do, he don't know what's going on. He has fixated his mind on a Cesare Borgia's image set up during the Renaissance and has used that as a damn identical twin to model himself after. Right? Now, I'm going to play this. Right? So, like, let me play this real quick. And um, I'm not going to play the whole thing. Obviously, it's 32 minutes. Right? Time will fail me. But um, I'm going to go into this. Right, so let's play this. Tonight, a worldwide investigation into the evil and destructive ways of a self-proclaimed messiah, a charismatic Australian whose devoted disciples believe he walked this earth 2,000 years ago. We commissioned the Rev... Now you see that? They say him and his disciples believed he walked the earth 2,000 years ago. Right, so that, that's going into regeneration. Right. But they, they really don't know what's going on. They don't know the depths of regeneration. Right. So let's play the rest of this. And David Milliken, one of the world's foremost experts on cults, to head up our special investigation that's been 10 months in the making. Tonight, we'll take you inside the Messiah's isolated Queensland compound where he's preparing his followers, including children, for the apocalyptic end of the world. See that? He's preparing his people. Hold on, let me go back to this. Uh, the Messiah's isolated Queensland compound where he's preparing his followers, including children, for the apocalyptic end of the world. See that? This man, he, he's even getting children involved in this thing. Right? He's even getting children involved in this madness, man. This is Esau right here, man. He's even getting young Edomite children. This is all judgment. See, the most I got these devils really believing that they're so-called, that they're the, uh, the Lord, man. Right? That they're Yahweh Shai. And we, and we can go through the precepts, right? We can go through the precepts time in and time out. Right? But let's, let's uh, play the rest of this.
the idea that the group is 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 coming together in a community and that Miller is developing a compound in my opinion is ominous because only the most extreme cults isolate themselves in a compound Jonestown or a Waco Davidian group which were two groups that ended tragically in mass suicide this is when groups become the most extreme because the leader controls everything yeah meaning sometimes these guys and, and uh, like i said i'm going to play this and i'm going to pull up i'm going to pull the precepts well, where's the scripture? Look, you got. We're going to go through the precepts. Now, a lot of these are uh, courts. These people, like the man said, they commit mass suicide. They molest the little children. They turn them to sex slaves and harlots. It's a lot of homosexuality that goes on, right? With this man who claims that he's the Lord. Now, what's the significance, right? Let me just go straight into it. What's the significance of this, right? Let me see if I could turn on this. Um, Salaki, see if that. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And that's all we like to talk about. I don't want to say all, but WFI, a great portion of the ministry that we dive into are the end time prophecies we go into the end of the world we dive into the book of ezekiel we go into zechariah we go into revelation we go into the latter chapters of daniel and we answer the question through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh that your pastor can't tell you we have to go into the end of the world so even the apostles inquired they were very inquisitive on trying to figure out what would they would look for on the earth to lead up to the second coming of Yahweh Shah. What signs would you able would you be able to see amongst the people, amongst the elements? What would you see? Would you see war? What, what would you see? So what did Yahweh Shah say? Matthew chapter 24 and 4. And Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. See what the Lord said? The first thing he said is, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right? For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. And that's what you got going on. These are part of the signs of the world. You may look at this oh, that's a small thing that happens all the time, but it's going to increase more and more and more and more, especially when all hell break loose. When all hell break loose, you're going to have these men claiming to be the Messiah. Right? You're going to have people in these churches open up, say the Christ is in my church. They're going to say those words. Christ is here. Jesus is here. You know, you're going to have these guys walking. The government may send out these damn Edomites that look like John Travolta with the beard and look like fake Jesus. And there's a famous so-called Jesus painting. I wonder if I'm able to get to the internet. Salaki, let me see if I can get to this. I think I got to take the airplane mode off. Okay, let me see if I can get to the internet. Right? So there's a... um. This is guy Warren. Salaki, if I'm not mistaken, this guy's name's Warren Salmon. I'm, I, may be, I may be pronouncing it wrong. Come on, Warner Salmon. So you got this guy, Warner Salmon. He is known for making the most famous image of white Jesus. Right? We always talk about Caesar Borges, and this is the number one image. There's an actual man named Warren Salmon who painted this image back in the day, and this is the leading forefront of white supremacy. Right? Warner Salmon. Right? You see that? Now, when you go into this, it says um, the head of Christ. Now, this is people coming in the name of the Lord and deceiving many. Right. So check this out. It says the head of Hamashiach, also called the salmon head or salmon head, is a 1940 portrait painting of Jesus of Nazareth. And we know that's not an actual painting of the Lord, because when we go through thousands of precepts, chiefly Daniel 10 and 5 through 6, Revelation chapter 1, 13 through 15, we clearly see that Hamashiach Yahweh is a dark-skinned man, right? But this was painted by an American artist, Warner Salmon, right? And he may be Leonardo da Vinci back on the earth. He may be Michelangelo painting this image all over again. As an extraordinary successful work, successful work of Christian popular devotional art, it has been reproduced over half a billion times worldwide. 
So the first one that Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci made, or either one of them, hey, that image did its thing. You can look up that image on your own. Yeah, okay. But this image that he used, he used that ancient image they made during the Renaissance in the 1400s and used it to make a new image that would deceive the people anymore because that old image was outdated. Right, a lot of people they were kind of getting hip and saying, "Oh, this really don't look like him." You know, this isn't you know doesn't look like an American phenotype man, and we want to really deceive the people. So now you have this salmon head, right, which is being produced every day, and large copies of the work have been made for churches, and small pocket or wallet sized prayer cards bearing the image have been mass produced for private devotional use. Who's mass producing this, Esau? Why is he doing that? To deceive the masses of the people. Who had that image in their house? My great-grandmother. Where is it at? It's still there to this day. Everybody has this image. It could be in your wallet like they're saying. It could be standing on your mantle next to JFK and your cousin in the military. It can be in your church. It can be in somebody's damn windshield bumper, a damn bu whatever, man. Right? The painting is said to have become the basis of... For the vis visualization of Jesus for hundreds of millions of people. See that? So this guy, Warren of Solomon, right? I want to actually, now he's a, an American painter, right? And guess what they called this man? The best known artist of the century. That's the title they labeled this man. The best known artist of the century. Right. Warren of Simon, 1892. To, and you best believe that he was paid to do this rather by the because the um, CIA, part of the CIA and the FBI, they have people that are artists. They show you that in the movie Argo. If you've seen the movie Argo uh, not too long ago, they actually show you how you had this um, Issacharite man who was a, um, a graphic designer hired by the CIA to draw out maps and stuff like that. So the CIA doesn't just hire, you know, um, Polit uh, politicians and men that know martial arts and secret service. They also hire people from different trades, chiefly drawing and painting, too. Now, we don't know, you know, we don't have to clear facts on that, but I'm led to believe personally that this man was hired and commissioned by the government like they did in ancient Rome to issue out this painting. And this guy can possibly be a, a regeneration of uh, Leonardo um, da Vinci, you know? It says uh, that's why he's the best artist of the century. Now, you don't have a lot of people talking about this guy, right? So uh, let me read on. Was an, and I'm going to get back to that video. Was an American painter from Chicago best known for his works of Christian religious imagery? Like who? Like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo. He also worked in commercial advertising as well as freelance illustration. He is most associated with his portrait of Jesus, head of Christ, of which more than 500 million copies have been sold. In 1994, the New York Times wrote that he was likely to be voted the best known artist of the century. You see that? You see that right there? The best known artist of the century. All right, so let's see if we can pull that up. See if we can get this guy. Right, Salakia. Right, Warner Salmon. It's hard, it's hard to kind of find this guy. Right. But you can see, oh, here he is right here. Now, I'm led to believe this is a Michelangelo and or or, um, or Salakia, Michelangelo or uh, Leonardo da Vinci in a regeneration. Right. Now, you see, this is the image that you see all throughout the churches. Sometimes it's in kids books. Right. But now this is the massive produced painting of um, so-called Jesus. Now, if you know anything about. Let's see, Leonardo. Da Vinci, I believe I might have said DiCaprio a few times, so like you. Uh, Leonardo Da Vinci, uh, Jesus, right? See that? Now, this is madness. A $450 million painting of Jesus. It looked like a woman. Now, they made this image back in the day, right? This is the original image that they painted or one of the original images painted during the Renaissance, right? Modeled after, if you don't know, this may be fundamental knowledge to brothers deep in this thing. You've been in this thing for a minute, but you have people coming to this truth every day. Now, this is the Last Supper, an another image of who they call Jesus. Now, this is an outdated image. And the and a, a Warner Simon image I showed you 
it's more of a modern day image. Now, this was painted during what you call the Renaissance, right? Salaki, the Renaissance, bear with me, right, so we can get this definition for you. The revival of art and literature under the influence of classical models in the 14th through 16th centuries. You see that? So this thing is real. The revival of art. And they actually painted the image of um, Yahweh Shah's the image of a so-called white man during this time. Now you look at all these ancient images and now they're so-called white images. And that's why you have men like that man in Australia who's claiming to be the Lord. I mean, look at this. This is a, is a damn woman at the um, Last Supper, man. Right? You know, that you read about in the book of John, you know, the 13th chapter. You can read this in Matthew 26. And uh, Luke 21 and and these different accounts of the Lord, right? So these are the images that they made of um, biblical figures, for lack of better terms, right? They, uh, they made Mona Lisa during the Renaissance. It is the revival of the so-called white man coming into power, right? Let's go to Caesar Borges. And that's where um, the modern day image of white Jesus is made after this man. Caesar Borgias, right, was an Italian politician and condotario of Val Valencian origin, whose fight for power was a major inspiration for the prince by Machiavelli. He was an illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI and member of the Spanish Aragonese House of Borgias. See that? Now, let's see if we can go into this. This is where you get the model image. Of a so-called Jesus. All right. He's actually modeled after Caesar Borges. Now, this isn't exploring the theory. It's not a theory. It's a plain known evidence, plain known fact. This image on your left is more so the Warner Simon image. The previous image I showed you that looked more outdated. That's one of the original images issued by the Pope to make white Jesus as a so-called, or make Yahweh the king of kings and lord of lords and the prince of life as a so-called white man, right? Now it says, um, let's, let's go through this. And I'm going to go back to this video and I'm going to pull some precepts. So now we're going to get into it. All right, when you're looking for a real life model for Yahweh Shah Mashiach, you'll be hard pushed to think of a less appropriate stand-in for the prince of peace than Cesar Borges. One of the most notorious members of Renaissance Italy's most notorious dynasties, the cruel uh, Cesare, was thought to be the inspiration of Niccolo Machiavelli's satirical uh, handbook for would-be tyrants to prince. You can see all these false images of the Lord that have been created throughout time. Now, this image looked more so like a jake, right? But the rest of these images are uh, um, so-called white images. They even got a damn Chinese Jesus, right? So this is madness. Thanks to his father, who became Pope Alexander VI in 1471, Caesar was made a bishop at the age of 15 and a cardinal at the age of 18. At this point in the history, in history, the Pope directly ruled over a kingdom that dominated central Italy from its capital of Rome. Right. Though a rising star in the church, Caesar or Caesare fancied himself as a military man. There was one problem, though, his father had chosen that career for his older brother, Giovanni. Pope Alexander had appointed his pride and joy, Captain General of the Church, the Supreme Command of the Papal State's Armed Forces. Look at this. Now, this is Sacred Heart Jesus. It looked like a damn homosexual. Right? Now, they may take the video down, but we don't give a damn. Right? What's up is up. Coincidentally, in 1497, Captain General Giovanni Borges was found floating lifelessly in the River Tiber. Now, when you go into this... What uh, scholars, most scholars would say that Caesar Borges killed his brother, Giovanni Borges. Now, this dynasty they even have an HBO series, if I'm not mistaken. It may be on stars called the Borges family, which is a cruel, a, a wicked, cruel family during the Renaissance. Pretty much a mob family. The world's first modern day mob Italian crime family. Like when you watch um, The Godfather, you watch uh, Goodfellas or these different Italian mob crime movies, The Irishman. They show these, these Edomites from these Sicilian, Italian backgrounds whose families have been rooted in, in um, crime, petty theft, larceny, 
drug distribution, whatever the case may be. The Caesar Borges family, or the or the Borges family rather, was the prototype of those uh, modern day crime families. With again, Caesare and his father Pope Alexander the Sixth being the forerunners of that. Right. So let's read on. Caesar left the church, inheriting his brother's robe, titles, and wealth, plus the title Duke of Valent Valentinois. If I'm pronouncing that right. As a gift from the Pope's staunch ally, King Louis XII of France. Right? See, this is Brother Giovanni Borges. Now I want to see how long this article is. Right? I don't, I don't, I don't want to go too long into this. But um, let's read on. Alright, the family weren't exactly short of enemies in Italy. But some suspect, suspect Cesare was behind his brother's end. Like we went into that, he killed his brother. Perhaps even drawing the blade himself. Further Borgia family drama comes from the fact that both Cesare and Giovanni shared a mistress. Sancha of Aragon, the wife of a third brother, Geoffrey or Geoff Borgia, a notorious womanizer. Cesare fathered 11 known illeg illegitimate children. Right? I want to get straight to the point. Now you can read this article on your own. Right, you can read to the article on your own. And you can check it out. Now, let's see. Um, okay, this very strange idea that one of the modern images of Jesus is based on Cesare originally comes from a claim made by the renowned novelist Alexander Dumas. Now, that's a Jake. Alexander Dumas was a Jake out there, I believe, in France. That um, he knew about that lifestyle. Right. And picked up and expanded upon by biblical theorists. The argument goes that Jesus was originally depicted as appearing non-European because he was Jewish. Right. Well, he wasn't Jewish. He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, which did not sit well with the Borgia Pope at the time. So in order to create a more European looking Jesus, Pope Alexander VI commissioned new paintings of Jesus using his illegitimate son as the model. He then allegedly ordered the destruction of. And this word allegedly, this actually happened. The destruction of all art depicting Semitic Yahweh shot, thereby popularizing one of the main enduring images of Jesus we have today. So the theory goes, like I said, you can read this on your own. I showed you this image and this is the original image that was painted uh, um, by Leonardo uh, da Vinci. Right. And it says that they were lovers. Like I said, I'm not going to go into this whole article. You know, I would like to, but just for sake of time, uh, you can kind of go into it on your own. You can see the image of um, Leonardo da Vinci that he painted, and it says that they were lovers. Right? So that was a, a light thing. He, you know, he kind of did his thing, well, then he painted them. Right? He's used as the European image. And you have something called iconoclasm. Right? So iconoclasm, the action of taking or assertively rejecting cherished beliefs and institutions or established values and practices, meaning you deny the truth by destroying the truth. The rejection or destruction of religious images as heretical, the doctrine of iconoclast and the original dark skin images were all broken up. You can clearly see the original dark skin images of the people of the Bible, and you can see how they're destroying these images. Even some of them, they're completely without faces. Look at these woolly hairs and woolly beards. And since they did not want the world to know that so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans dominated the earth and are the biblical Isaiah, are the biblical Jacob, the biblical Abraham, the biblical Peter and Moses, and these mighty men of the Lord, even Hamashiach, wa Malachi, Awashah himself, who the world through severe ignorance calls Jesus Christ. We're all dark skinned people. Right? See how they're burning the images? And that's why you get that Warner Simon. That's why we said Warner Simon, he may very well be, you know, the new, the um, the revitalized Mike uh, Leonardo da Vinci to reissue this painting of this man. Right? Now, again. The original image of the Lord is the so-called black man. Let's go to that real quick. Let's go to Matthew 24 and 24. Let's see more signs at the end of the world. It reads, for there shall arise false Christ 
and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And people are being deceived. Everybody's family believes this modern day image. That's why you got this so-called white man in Australia. And I'm, and I'm led to believe there's Jake's following this guy. Right. It may not be a lot, but, you know, I could count on two fingers how many Jake's are probably following this guy. So the, even Yahweh Shah prophesied that these Edomites are going to not only paint that image, but also give life into that image and cause many people to worship that image. Right. And when I say give life, I'm not just speaking about that carnal image. It's the sin of the so-called white man. And part of him giving life is painting that image. Uh, Caesar Borgias. Right. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 15 and 4. It reads, For neither did the mischievous invention of men deceive us, nor an image spotted with diverse colors. The painter, painter's fruitless labor. So we haven't been, dece haven't been deceived by idols or paintings. We're not deceived by Caesar Borges. We're not deceived by the Warren, Warren Salmon image of the Lord. Right, because we can go through the text and the Holy Spirit is going to show us that Yahweh Shah is indeed a dark skinned man. Right? Did not John say, I beheld one like unto the Son of Man? Right? Paraphrasing. Clothed with the garment down to the foot. And his eyes were as a flame of uh, slack, and his uh, girded about the paps with the golden girdle. Right? And his eyes were as a flame of fire. You see that? And, that's, and then it tells you his, his uh, hair is like wool and his feet like brass burnt in a furnace. Right? So the Lord is a dark-skinned man. So we haven't been deceived by the painter's fruitless labor. Verse uh, 5. The sight there whereof enticeth fools to lust after it. And so they desire the form of a dead image that had no breath. And people desired uh, Caesar Borgias and he has no breath. Both they that make them, like Warren Salmon, like, uh, and there's been many other painters, Leonardo da Vinci, both they that make them, they that desire them, meaning your Christians, you, these, these people of the world, Catholics, and they that worship them are lovers of evil things and are worthy to have such things to trust upon, right? Because the elect are worthy to, re, to uh, uh, bear, um, bear the name of Hamash Yahweh because they were created for that. So they're worthy for that. They were, You have to elect that have been predestinated from the foundation of the world to teach this truth, to proclaim the gospel and save actual souls from damnation through the word. You understand? To declare doctrine, to break down strongholds. They have been set up and they're worthy for that because they were created for that. You have certain men that were created to bow down to this image and they're worthy for it because they have been predestinated to do so. You see that? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them, the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Now we're about to read it um, in the Bible. This is why they took the Apocrypha out, or one of the many reasons about so-called white Jesus and his creation. It's documented in the Bible. Everything is in there. I don't have to open up the encyclopedia. I don't have to open up the Book of the Dead or the Epic of Gilgamesh or the Thesaurus to read what's written. Right? It says, For a father afflicted of untime, with untimely mourning. And his father, prophetically, Solomon is speaking about Pope Alexander VI and his son, Caesar Borgias. So, for a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he had made an image of his child soon taken away, because Cesare Borges died. Now honor him as a god, which was then a dead man, and deliver to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings, and kings went out, men, um, uh, missionaries, from uh, Spain, missionaries from England, from France, they went and colonized not only the known world, but parts of Africa and other places in the name of white Jesus. And if you didn't bow down to it, according to their Western law, you were put to death. 
So yes, graven images were worshipped by the commandment of kings, not only in the 1400s, but also in the 1600s, the 1500s, the 1900s, the 1800s, even in 2021. You know, also uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 18. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forth the ignorant to more superstition. Who's the artificer, the painter, the craftsman? Who put the wood and the colors and the painting together, he helped set forth the superstition. Right? For he, peradventure, willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And he was set up to please great authority, not only Warren Simon, but Leonardo da Vinci. They were set up to please Rome. Remember that uh, um, when you read Revelation, the 12th chapter, and the 13th chapter, chiefly the 13th chapter. I'm not, I may go into it. Let me just go into it real quick. You have ancient Rome and you have modern day Rome, right? This is a revelation chapter 13 and three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast, right? This beast that is speaking about in ancient times was what? Rome, right? For just summing it up. Right, you had Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain. These are the seven heads of this beast. One of the heads that fell was the Roman Empire. Rome fell in 476 AD. Some scholars would say 93 AD, right? They fell, but they came back into power in the late 1300s, early 1400s, called the Renaissance, which is the rebirth. They're healed and birthed again, the so called white man. Right. So that's why it says in Wisdom of Solomon that this man was set up to please one in authority because Leonardo da Vinci, he did that in the uh, 1400s to please one in authority, which was the Pope. Warren Salmon and these other Edomite painters, they were issued by rather the CIA, the FBI, the Illuminati popped up at their door with a cup of baby blood and said, paint this image. Right. They hire people. They tap people on their shoulder in these Ivy League schools. And tell them, look, we need you to paint these images. They're going to take your skill sets and, you know, and use you, man. You don't want to spew you out. Right? It reads, um, let's read on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and 18. I mean, 19. For he, peradventure, willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. So they force people to do that, man. Yeah, if you got a certain skill set, this government, they find out they're going to use it, man. You know? They hire wizards, warlocks, painters, snipers, uh, damn, everybody, man. Read Numbers 22. These heathen, they'll hire anybody to, to vex Israel. They hired a wizard. They'll hire painters. They'll, even in judges, they hired a woman. They paid a woman to deceive. They, there is no limit what these heathen may, are going to do to deceive Israel. You know? Even a serpent went to Eve, and that was a council set up by those nations to make man fall. You know? Uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 20. And so the multitude, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a God, which was a little before was but honored. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. So why was these images created? What was the occasion? Was it for fun? Because, you know, Pope Alexander could have just made this image and set it up on his mantle and said, oh, in honor of my son. But no, he said, no, we're going to use this image to be God, to be Jesus Christ, to deceive the masses of the people, really the Israelites, so they can't see themselves in their book anymore. Because if you're looking in the Bible and you have been completely mentally destroyed to believe that everybody in the Bible is a so-called white man, then you're going to disassociate yourself with the Bible through the spirit. And you're going to look at the so-called white man as if he's Jesus, as if he's God. You're going to go to helm to learn. You're going to go to helm to get healed. You're going to go to helm when you want happiness. You're going to go to helm when you're crying. You're going to go to helm when you're going through depression. You're going to rely on the so-called white man's medicinal industry, his pharmaceutical industry. You're going to rely on him for entertainment. You're going to rely on him to, his, to learn his Ivy League colleges and his curriculum because this man has now become your God. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. For men serving either calamity or tyranny, they describe it to stones and stocks the incommunicable, incommunicable name, right? 
So let's go back to this uh, video. Right? And this is where this man... See, I wanted to see if I could find it again. Right? So here we have it. Your dad was a hokey man. His right, bear with me. Man. You are a hokey man, Phil. But this? So we're going to play a little of this and then wind down. The leader is this man. My name's Alan John Miller, but, but I'm, I'm actually Jesus. I remember all of the events of my crucifixion. I understood what was going on. I this man is bugged out. Smid with madness. He said he remembers all the events of his crucifixion. This man's gonna have a horrible, horrible death. My name's Alan John Miller, but, but I'm, I'm actually Jesus. My name's Alan John Miller, but, but I'm, I'm actually Jesus. I remember all of... My name's Alan John Miller, but, but I'm, I'm actually Jesus. You see that? He don't even believe that. I remember all of the events of my crucifixion. I understood what was going on. I understood the reason for my death. And he's collecting disciples. Miller has convinced them that they were with him at his crucifixion. Just went to get the spike and smash it into his hands. And just so much love had come from him. So I couldn't do it. Was it? This is madness. This is my first time watching this. You got these guys, Edomites, crying. This is madness. Excruciating to watch basically the annihilation of the person that I love the most. <laughs> this is sick. Whenever I think about him now, I just cry. I'm starting to have a, a soul, like an emotional realization of who he is. Wow. I'm at a loss for words, right? You know, you know, I, I, there's not much I can say right now because that's why the Mosai has to destroy this place, man. This man said, I'm Jesus, deal with it. And if you are the Lord, you wouldn't say that your name is, 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 is Jesus. You would say, I'm Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, the savior of the nation of Israel. And if you're the Lord, you're not going to hang around Edomites. If you was the Lord, you wouldn't be in Australia. Hey, it says, boy, it says, behold, the Lord cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also would pierce him. Where's the chariots that you're coming with? Where's your spaceships? Where's the mother, the fathership that you're supposed to be in? Right? World War III, but this, this is, these, this is, this is madness. Blasphemy. I'm on the way to Mergen in country Queensland to two days of teachings by Yeshua ben Joseph. His now he changed Yeshua ben Joshua. No, the Lord's real name is Yahweh Shah ben Yahweh Sa. If, if he was to say his name, he'd say, look, look, I'm Hamashiach, or I'm like Yahweh Shah. Or he would just say, humbly saying, Yahweh Shah would say, look, look, I'm Yahweh Shah ben Yahweh Sa. Right? You know, that, that, that would have been it. It's a gathering of the faithful from around the world. And all these people must be about to cry. I'm Jesus, this is Mary. And so what we want to do today is talk about addictions and bribery and fear, threats. When did the Lord, when did the Lord say he's going to come with a whiteboard? Well, you know, I'm coming with a whiteboard and I'm, I'm going to show you about alcoholism. And No, the Lord, the Lord not coming to show you about this stuff, man. Everybody in this room going to be damn burnt to pieces, man, and thrust through with the sword. And blackmail. I can feel that many of you are still in addictions with regard to your development towards God. When did the Lord come on the scene and say he's going to talk about blackmail? This is madness. And why is the Lord speaking English? And why is the Lord hanging around the enemy? And why is the Lord uh, uh, next to Mary? And why does the Lord have leprosy? And why does the Lord have straight hair? And, and why do you have these Edomites crying? And if these Edomites, uh, this is, this is Edomites, they don't bear witness with the truth. Yahweh Shai is the truth. Even Pontius Pilate asked Yahweh Shai, what is truth? 
Showing that Esau, they don't bear witness with this thing, man. Pontius Pilate asks Yahweh what is truth? Because these Edom, they don't know what's going on. So how could they bear witness and follow the true Messiah? And there's 20,000 cuts I can think of. I've got all of these emotional injuries. I will feed them with my truth. These things Look at this. are not going... Look at this. See that? This is, this is... I've never seen nothing like this in my life. Never. She's crying. This, this is madness. Hey, the Lord said in Deuteronomy 30 and 7, all the curses that befell us are going to befall these heathen. One of them is Deuteronomy 28 and 28, where they're going to be smitten with madness, blindness, and astonishment of heart. So these Edomites, they're finished. They're washed up. They're done. And their own people did this to them. Because the Illuminati's Edomites elite bankers, they know that the Lord is the so-called black man. That's why they spend billions, trillions of dollars and do extensive labor and detail to hide that true image from the people of the Most High, which are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of Negro and Indian descent, which are the 12 tribes of the children of Israel that were once lost, now found through the mercy and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh in the last days. To go away from you just by you getting baptized. To me, these words sound like rehashed New Age pop psychology. But for these people, they burn with the light of divine truth. Let yourself feel the disillusionment you feel. The disillusionment about the search. What's happening here is AJ is talking about emotions. Now, most religions are suspicious of emotions. They see faith as essentially a thing of the mind. But emotions take us to the heart of AJ's teachings. What he's doing is setting up a sort of spiral where people get dragged down and down. And you got Esau, damn, getting on the other Esau, on white Jesus. This is madness. Down. And people are asked to plumb the depths of emotions from which many of them can never. You can't even get this many Jakes to hear the word. Right? You get you get all them Edomites to come out and listen to that madness, but you can't get that one so-called black right. Hispanic or Native American to come hear the scriptures and you ask them if you got them into hear the Bible. Love you. You know? And, I, and I'm gonna get a few more precepts, then we're gonna kinda wind down. You have to shut yourself down so much just to please your mother. Because that's that's what she wants you to do. Shut you down so much. And she was giving you all of these things, but she wants a heap of things in return from you, and that feels bad to you. Leadership. So allow yourself to connect with that. That's it. And as you connect with that, you can Look, I can't take it no more. I can't take it no more. And I know I know you can't take it. And you know, this is these are the hey, these are the signs of the times. These are signs at the end of the world. All right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14 and 9. And you know, these are the signs. Slocky, I'm, I'm um just this is madness. All right? This is Ezekiel 14 and 9. Right, I, I can't do it no more. It reads, and if the prophet be deceived, and this guy is a prophet, but he's a prophet on the left hand side. And if the prophet be deceived when he hath spoken the thing, I, Yahweh, by Hashem Shai, have deceived that prophet and will stretch up my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. So the Lord said, if there's a man out there claiming to be the Messiah, and he's not. The Lord created that man to do that. That's his purpose in life, to deceive the masses of the people, you know? And the Lord created that man to deceive the people just so he can destroy that man. And that's the beautiful thing about it. It's not nothing to get mad about. It's nothing to get, you know, you want to go fly to Austria and kind of choke him out. And the Lord created that man just to destroy him, you know? It reads, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh to him. Right. Let's go to another precept. Let's go to Second Peter two and one. Right. And I and I may watch the rest of that on my own, but for sake of time, you know, this this madness. I'll just go through these precepts uh, very quickly. Second Peter two and one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you. Now Peter prophesied of this too. Peter's a prophet, right? Who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And Yahweh Shai is the truth. Right? 
pursuing the John 14 and 6. Now, he is being evil spoken of. You have Esau going into rehab psychology and you have Edomites trembling in their in their, their sneakers and in their boots over something that you can learn from a psych 101 class at your local community college. Right. There is no clouds and chariots that the Lord is coming with. Where, I mean, that, that this man has. Where's the flame of fire? Where is the resurrection? These, these people are bugged out. Right. Then Yahweh shall say, uh, let's go to John chapter five. Right. This is absolute madness. These people don't open up the butt. Hey, they're, they're blinded, you know. And wisdom of Solomon chapter two, it says for their own wickedness had blinded them. John chapter five and twenty eight. Marvel not at this for the hour is coming and the witch all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. And then they have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. So where, where is the dead being risen and being destroyed and the elect being beamed up in the chariots? Where is the second wilderness set? Where is the garment drenched in blood? Where is the beast making war? But again, these are signs of the times, signs of the end of the world. Right. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 8. And he said, this, uh, I'll start at um, seven. And they asked him saying, Master, when shall these things be? Meaning, when are the, when are the buildings going to be destroyed? When is the economy going to collapse? When is this place going to go out? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach. And the time draweth near, go ye not forth. Go ye not therefore after them. Right. So don't follow these people. Right. But you're going to have a lot of jakes get caught up in this thing. Man. You know, and, I, and I'm led to believe that the uh, this government may send out Edomites that look like white Jesus. They got Project Blue Beam when they're going to do a holographic image, a 4D image of white Jesus and with maybe his voice. And people are going to follow that. That's why Yahweh Shah said this. Matthew chapter 24 and 25. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they say, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So people are going to say that in the last days. When all hell is breaking loose, people are going to be cleaving to any sign of hope. Right? People are going to be looking for answers. When you haven't eaten in days, and eat and drink anything in days and your loved ones have been killed before your eyes and your wife has been ravished and kidnapped and anything. You're going to be at not the men of the Lord and the women of the Lord, but the masses of people are going to be at wit's end. And then these news, they're going to take it as good news. If somebody say the Lord is over here, they're going to be bugged out and follow. We can't follow that. We have to constantly remember that it's going to be so easy to see our shot. Like you can't miss lightning covering the whole face of the sky. It's impossible to miss. Your peripheral vision to pick it up. You'll see it plain. It'll light up the entire sky. You cannot even be looking at the sky and see the damn whole earth flash. That's how easy it's going to be to see the second coming of Yahweh Shah. So you need not to have a man with a whiteboard teaching you Psych 101 from damn uh, your community college, but you need the true and living God who sent his son, Hamashak Yahweh Shah, to redeem the nation of Israel. So with that, Brother Nakwam, Watchman for Israel, coming back at you with these precepts and another cold cut, giving, of course, our honor and glory to Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach, Kwam Alak Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yashallah. These are signs of the times. Shalom.